What's up, guys, and welcome to One Take. Tonight, we're talking about Amazon Prime's Upload, Episode 2, titled Five Stars. I'm Gil, here with my brother Adam. Hello. And our tech guy slash brother Alun. Yo. And before we get into it, quick reminder to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we release a video and the next time we go live. Now, I know all 10 episodes of this show have been released, but this is just episode two. We haven't watched anything past that, so no spoilers for episode three onward. We're pacing ourselves. Exactly. We're trying to enjoy this show and make it last. So let's jump into episode two. First off, I have to make a correction. In episode one, I kept referring to the suicide tube in the middle of the town as the torrid. The and you, you both said that you knew I was saying it wrong, but neither of you corrected me. Well, you made, you, you made me start questioning myself. I forgot what it was called, but when I said torrid, because you said it, it didn't feel right. <laughs> well, Adam, what was it actually called? The torrent. Which makes a lot more sense, because it's a data link, right, mm-hmm. tech yeah. guy? Right. All right, I don't want to sound stupid again, so if I say anything dumb this time... Give me the bell, and we'll make the correction. (laughs) So overall, I think we are all sort of feeling pretty similar about this show after episode two. We like the show. It's definitely a little bit sillier, a little bit more comedic than what we usually watch. And I do think episode two shows us that they'll dip into some darker, more interesting ideas. But the silly sort of network television feel of the show always yanks it back to that sort of status quo, which I don't hate. But I also don't love. I think, Alun, you put it uh, you put it pretty accurately after the episode. I like it more than I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so overall, I think just a pleasure to watch, and we're going to keep going through the season. Anything else to add just overall how you felt about the episode before we jump into the highlights? Well, I, I like that it's getting into some of, besides just the main character adjusting to this world, it's getting into some plot arcs that are hinting at some overarching thing that's going on in the background, right? And you love a good conspiracy, right? Yeah. So, so that's perfect for you. Owen, how about you? Any other thoughts? Uh, you know, besides the conspiracies that we're mm-hmm. learning about and all that, I, there are some interesting characters that add, you know, they're they're pretty funny. Like he, the guy across the hall from him. Choke? Yeah, oh, Choke. Yeah. Uh, one of the Choke brothers, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, that dude that was uh, just staring at him annoyed and then walked away in front of the bushes. You remember right, that? right. At the uh, Japanese garden or something. Yeah, I see you're making yourself at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah, they're some funny characters. Awesome. Well, let's jump into the episode and talk about highlights. First off, let's talk about Ingrid. Mm. So that's uh, Nathan's ex-girlfriend, or still current girlfriend. She uh, continues to be the worst <laughs> and I will say, though, I don't know if I need any more jokes about her grooming her uh, area, her private area. Hoo-ha. <laughs> I think they both... don't have those in heaven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think uh, no. Actually, in this episode, it was made very clear they do have those That's, in yeah. this episode. <laughs> uh, she goes to buy a uh, an intimate suit, which was uh, pretty disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> it's all it's all of these like inflatable fingers. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, Adam, she doesn't want to invest in actually buying one. She's going to go rent one, which yeah. has been previously used. Oh, the close-up shot when they talk about how kids will use them, too, for their grandparents oh, to, to hug, hug them. them. Yeah. And you see all the hairs and stuff. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, do you have any theories about Ingrid? So do we think that she's involved? So kind of jumping to the end of the episode, just to tie it in. We do see a memory of Nathan's where an investor basically says, who else have you told about this app? We're ready to buy it. And this is the app that allows people to create their own upload. And uh, it's obviously something that the big companies won't like. Right. Implying the conspiracy being maybe one of the big upload companies killed Nathan. Did you, you asked me during the episode if I think Ingrid is involved in that company. Is that a prediction of yours? Yeah, I think she is. I I think it's it's clear that she's very wealthy and mm-hmm. we don't know why. I think she's either f- tied by family to that company or she's otherwise involved somehow. Right. So maybe she wanted him dead, the company wanted him dead, mm-hmm. and so she just nudged things in that direction. Either that or it's just a coincidence and she collects boyfriends in this world. That's one other possibility because <laughs> she seems weird enough to do that. Although she seems very disinterested in him now that he's there. So I think most likely she's part of the company. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm interested. That was our theory after episode one, but uh, mixed signals, so we'll see. Let's jump over to Nora, and here we learn that that app introduced in episode one, Nightly, is specifically sort of like Uber for uh, physical intimacy. Hookups. Yeah, and I love uh, my, uh, my, my tap dance of trying to avoid saying certain words. That'll get the YouTube algorithm after us. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if we should say the word algorithm. You know what? <laughs> this stream is over. We're out of here. <laughs> uh, was I dense or was it obvious in episode one that that's what this app was all about? I assumed it was just a normal Tinder-esque dating app. When was Nightly mentioned in episode one? Can you remind uh, me? Remember when Nora was talking to her friend while she was showering? Mm -hmm. And she's like, all I get are meth addicts and uh, busboys. Oh, yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, so uh, turns out that that's what the app is all about. And uh, do you think, Adam, prediction time, you're big on tech. Actually, mm -hmm. tech guy, do you think this app will exist in the next 10 years? Yes, but only for Android because I don't think Apple would allow something <laughs> like that. Adam, you concur? I mean, it already kind of exists depending on how you use them, right? Yeah, I, it's not the express purpose of uh, the Tinders of the world. Yeah, and I guess you don't rate the people. That's one. That's of the right. That's well, right. Uh, but I think people do have ratings in all these apps. It's just not necessarily a linear. How good are you? So much as it's different qualities rated in certain ways in, in the background. Right, right. In the algorithm, like this guy's. Uh, this is a great guy. Yeah, this guy sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We also learn a little bit more about her backstory. She's trying to get an employee discount so she can afford upload for her father. And in order to get that employee discount, she needs a score of, what was it, 4.6, 4. I think? I think so. And her score right now is a 4.598. Something like that. Yeah, so she's just on the brink of it, and her boss, who is the worst, will not approve that employee discount, even though she's right on the line. And they do a good job of making her boss just seem like the worst human being. A, she won't approve Nora's uh, employee discount. B, we see her spying on Luke when he puts the mirror in privacy oh, yeah. mode. <laughs> <laughs> so this show does a good job of making you immediately hate whoever you're supposed to hate. Yeah. Ingrid, Nora's boss. Anything else to say about just Nora's backstory there, the little bit we learn? Uh, I wonder, I'm wondering where it's going to go, right? Like... I don't think you can just force someone to go to the this afterlife if they don't want to. You're doing it, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? Uh, Nathan's the main character, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He. I mean, he kind of was coerced into it, right? Sort right. of like due to the urgency of the situation. But I don't think Nora would do that to him without her, w without her father changing his mind. Right. Right. But I think if anything, he's going to change her mind about it all. Yeah, I don't see him changing his mind, and uh, I'm interested to see if they delve further into that conversation, because that was one of the more interesting moments for me in episode one, this guy who refuses to go to Upload because he lost his wife, and she's in quote-unquote real heaven. I'd like to see them tackle that conversation and go into more depth on it. Let's jump over to, as you said, Adam, the main character, Nathan. He meets, uh, He goes to animal therapy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Luke hands him that big dog, which again, love Luke. And then the dog starts talking. So it's a therapy, for literally a dog therapist. And basically, Nathan says he's struggling with wanting responsibility. I want to be independent and capable. In the real world, people rely on you. Women want to be with you. And then the dog assigns him to speak to five people. I guess just what did you think of a dog therapist? What did you think of Nathan's struggles and uh, and all that? Well, uh, this is actually I, this is the first time I can remember seeing a dog actually talking and it not bothering me. Besides the cartoon dog, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty hilarious, and uh, I also I liked him describing his plight. I think that would be probably the biggest issue with going to an upload like place is the lack of uh, responsibility. He says people rely on you. And upload, what are you supposed to do? And I'm curious to see how they resolve that. Is he going to find a hobby? I mean, can you still build skills in upload or do they just download them into your brain like in the Matrix? Mm. But I imagine that would be one of the toughest things about being there is you no longer have that experience of improving at something. Right. And I think for him, a part of it will be trying to help Nora. 
Right? Yeah, I think that's going to be huge for him because that is it, it, the one way that you could be relied upon in the upload world is emotionally. Mm -hmm. So he sees Nora as somebody who needs his help, and she's probably the only person, at least at the moment, where he can provide something of value. Right, now, and it's someone who exists in real life, not in a virtual world. Right, exactly. Now, one weird thing I thought about after episode one is he doesn't he hasn't reached out to his mother or any of his family yet, it seems. Yes. Which, do you think there's a reason for that, or have we just not yeah. gotten to it yet? It could just be an oversight, or <laughs> it could just be that it's not that relevant to the plot. Benioff and Weiss, we kind of forgot about yeah. the... Uh... <laughs> it's, for all we know, that's happening off camera. It's just not that relevant to the plot, so they're not showing it to us. Well, his mother, my impression was that she's not very pro-upload. She seemed pretty horrified when he was going through the process. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're going to... If there's going to be a moment of him saying, Mother, you haven't reached out to me. And right. It might be just a, a thing on her part where she's so against this world, you're not my son anymore. It's like people's parents just refusing to figure out how to use FaceTime, so <laughs> they end up complaining that you don't talk to them. Right. <laughs> now, one theory on the torrent, because the therapist talks to him. I mean, he had, the reason he's going to animal therapy is because he was very close to ending his afterlife. Now, after episode one, I thought, why the hell do they need to have that torrent simulated in this world so people can end like i said their afterlife and i wonder if it's done purposefully luke made reference in episode one to the fact that in the first iteration of upload you didn't have to eat didn't have to go to the bathroom you didn't blink and people went psychotic do you think similarly they have to at least have the option of ending things and maybe that's why they purposefully put that torrent there i think that's part of it yeah i i think it would be pretty torturous to have no way out right right agreed so i think uh i bet that'll get addressed at some point uh the speaking to five people assignment i feel like that plot didn't really go anywhere it was kind of just an excuse for a few jokes yeah uh except for the choke character like you said big fan of that guy and uh, why don't we jump over to david choke so what did you think of this character probably the smartest person on the show <laughs> <laughs> I love his nonchalant when Nathan tells him, I got in a car accident. Ah, so you got murdered. Yeah. <laughs> I love his just no BS attitude. <laughs> and while they're talking, Nathan realizes again that he's forgetting stuff. He can't even remember the name of the app he was working on. Mm -hmm. And Alon, I have to say, it's so funny how every show we cover seems to have a little handshake overlap with the previous show. We're watching devs, we're talking about human consciousness, what is it, determinism, that leads right into Westworld. Westworld, removing somebody's memories, removing who they are, handshake over to Upload, where exact same concept. They're erasing his memories, which is such a disturbing idea, because your memories, Adam is an expert on uh, the, the mind, <laughs> your memories basically make you who you are. Yeah. So if you're erasing those, that's just slowly eradicating your consciousness, basically. You lose your sense of continuity with the past. Exactly. So it's pretty disturbing that he's forgetting all this stuff. Well, it seems like the memories are still in there somewhere. Because right. when uh, Nora and him were singing that song... Uptown the, Funk? Exactly. The lyrics started coming back to him. Yeah, so maybe even if they're deleting the .mem files, <laughs> they haven't quite figured out how to totally control the human brain. Maybe he was able to pull it out of the recycle bin. Maybe. Maybe they didn't permanently delete it. Yeah. yeah. Or the and the other thing is he still remembers the purpose of the app he was working on. He just forgets the name. And you would think that if they were trying to actually erase those memories because he's a competition, they would probably want to get rid of that stuff too. So But maybe it was an intern just half assing it. Like you gotta yeah. delete the memory. I deleted it. Yeah. You deleted the name. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of uptown funk you up. Nora and Nathan continue to uh, blossom into a little, I think, romance is in the air. A little bit. So uh, he can't remember the song that they uh, danced to at prom, Uptown Funk. And Nora helps him remember by singing it. They start singing together. She's also struggling to get her five-star ratings, right? So she can uh, get the employee discount. So at a certain point he calls her over and just gives her five stars over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Adam, go ahead. I see if something well, to say I'm, about that. <laughs> it's not a big deal because they could have just shown this dragged out over a longer period of time and have him request 
a bunch of legitimate needs from her and then rate her five stars for doing that. Instead, they just had him do it over and over again in sequence, which no modern algorithm would allow to have a large impact on her overall rating. <laughs> yeah. So that just, I rolled my eyes a little bit at that, but I don't actually, I, I don't really care. It doesn't really detract that much. Right. I know everybody watching this right now, they're trying to hit that like button, you know, 50 yeah. times. Doesn't work though. If you yeah. hit it and then you hit it again, it just unlikes it. So remember, don't do that. Remember, right. if you want to hit it multiple times, just make sure you hit it an odd number of times. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I'm enjoying. Uh, it's it's the Jim and Pam of the show. I'm enjoying watching them come together. I wonder what's going to happen when Ingrid uh, catches a whiff of this. <laughs> so I'm worried about that. Uh, though, if she kills Nora as well, yeah, then they can be together. There you go. Uh, let's talk about Dylan. So we mentioned how the show does touch on some darker themes, and here we get one of them. We see this child who's playing a sort of Street Fighter type of game with the butler. I know that's what Alun would be doing the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> that looked all, that, that was pretty cool, actually. Yeah. yeah, I wonder how much more of the reality bending stuff we're going to see. We see a hint of it there, where the kids fighting the butler. We see the talking dog, but you could do anything in this world. And so far, it doesn't seem like they've gotten that creative. I, I I would imagine there'd be like Space World over there where you can go visit Mars. But so far, it just seems like a country club. Yeah, well, like this Lakeview world to me looks like a retirement home for older people. So I don't know, like there's probably a bunch of other kinds of VR or not VR simulated afterlives right. too. I don't know why this is the one he went to other than that it's what his girlfriend, what, what Ingrid kind of right. signed him up for. But I don't know. I feel like there's probably better ones for younger people. Definitely. And I, I, we might just have not seen all of it yet. Yeah. And uh, he might need to borrow more of uh, Ingrid's money to get access to some of the cooler areas of Lakeview. But basically, Dylan, eight-year-old kid, all of a sudden he finds that his best friend in the world is no longer responding to any of his messages. He seems to be blocked. Sends Nora to investigate. It turns out his friend is 18 years old now. They were best friends, you know, 10 years ago. But in the real world, this kid continues to grow up while Dylan stays the same age, as Matthew McConaughey says. <laughs> <laughs> in a very different context. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty dark. That's pretty sad to think about. And Nora tries to, when she comes back and gives Dylan the bad news, he tells her, you know, you tried your best, but it just wasn't good enough and gives her three yeah. stars. I think in, a, in part this highlights the, the flaws in the technology of the, the system that they live in. So we, we already see there's some glitches, like the birds flapping their wings in the sky at the beginning of the episode kind of glitch out for a second. Right. And you see a bunch of little issues here and there. Uh, so part of it could just be they haven't figured out how to include aging. You know, like right. most people would want to not get older while they're there, but you might have kids who at least could reach maturity. Yeah, I think you'd want to age to mid 20s, maybe, yeah. maybe 30, and then sort of pause or be able to change it at will. Like, I want to just be younger now, I want to be older. But yeah, if you entered this world as an eight year old, I don't think you'd want to just stop developing and then you run into these sorts of issues. That 18-year-old would probably be super down to play whatever the 2038 version of Halo is, for yeah. example. <laughs> so, yeah. So, again, though, it's a moment where you're like, wow, that's pretty dark. And then poof, you're back to just the normal upload humor. So, you kind of just breeze past it. Uh, so, we touched already on the conspiracy. We talked about that memory we saw. And I think our big takeaway is big company, upload technology, wants to wipe out this uh, free version of it, which could destroy their industry. Right. But that does give you a little bit of a window into uh, Nathan, where episode one in moments tried to convince us this is not the best guy, pretty narcissistic, but it seems like he was doing something he believed in and something that would really help a lot of people. So I'm intrigued to see what the thesis of this character will be. Is this really his one flaw? Is that he's overly concerned with his appearance? What was his motivation for working on the app? Uh, curious to see where that goes. Anyway, any other thoughts on episode two? No, it's good. It it, it added some depth uh, to the show. It made, added the just the right amount of curiosity that I needed to kind of keep going with it. Yeah, agreed. Only other thoughts I'd say, uh, Luke, that character, 
They did a great job with him. I want to see more Luke. Yeah, he's funny. And I think comedically, uh, probably about half the jokes land for me. And it's the smaller ones that work. Choke being nonchalant saying, oh, so you got murdered. Mm-hmm. Or the uh, the guy you referenced in the Japanese garden, you seem to have made yourself at home. <laughs> yeah. Just the oddity of that moment. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll continue to watch, see how this all unfolds. And with that, I think we can say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video and the next time we go live. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.